Welcome to my channel, artists. Today we'll be making color blended landscapes. Step number one, blend two colors. For this project, I like to focus on a color scheme. So you can see I have chosen analogous colors, colors that are next to each other in the rainbow or color wheel, orange and yellow, of course, being next to each other. And then I'm going to begin painting. To have a soft blended look, you need to put one color and paint it quickly. As you can tell, I'm trying to paint really quickly across that page. I'm not going to paint the entire page that color because I want it to go blended softly from yellow to orange. So most of the paper will be yellow and then I'm going to start on the about one third of the right hand side. I'm starting with orange and I'm going to paint that um, area orange and then I'm going to try to slowly blend from orange into the yellow. Um, because orange is a much stronger pigment than yellow, it does um, pretty much overpower it, which is normal. If you need to rinse your brush occasionally, you can. Be careful with this step not to overload your paintbrush with water. If you rinse your paintbrush out a little bit, that's no big deal, but overloading it with water can cause it to turn into more of a watercolor look, which is beautiful, but won't give you the same brightness and intensity of mixing colors. So you can see here, I keep adding yellow back in and kind of going back and forth to mix my colors. Step number two, blend more colors. If you can, you want to do this at least one more time so that you have two separate pages that are blended. For this color scheme, I chose monochromatic. Monochromatic, of course, is one color. So to make it more interesting for monochromatic, I blended with black to make it a little bit darker. Again, starting with one color on the left-hand side, painting about two-thirds away with that color, and then adding the next color in to blend it back. You always, if you can, want to try to mix your stronger color second. So black is a stronger color than blue, and that pigment um, will help you go from dark to um, the black, I'm sorry, to the blue as um, gently as you can. You, you will have to kind of work it and see what happens with your project. There's a lot of this that happens by learning um, and so and practicing. If this takes you two or three tries to practice, that is okay. Just keep working on it, trying to make it um, smoothly blend from one color to the next. Now that we have finished painting, we are ready for step number three, let it dry overnight. Once it is dry, step number four add, is for you to draw a horizon line. You're gonna choose one paper, not both, and draw a horizon line. It can be a straight line or it can be a curved line. The horizon line, of course, is the line where the ground meets the sky. You don't want it bumpy or a little bit too much. Step five, go ahead and cut your horizon line you will not end up needing half of your paper. So if you're working on this in the classroom, you can actually give your paper to someone else. Um, you're gonna wanna pick the side of the paper that's the most interesting to you. So I kind of looked at it and decided I liked the more part that had a little more blended on it. So I decided to keep that um, color and then I'm ready for gluing. When you glue, just that friendly reminder, glue a little bit away from the edges of the paper just to make sure that you don't get glue on your paper. Um, after I glue mine down, I do notice that it kind of sticks out a little bit. So I did go ahead and add glue back to the corners, but you want to make sure that you don't glue too close to the edge and have the glue pop out. Step number six is to draw a tree. I'm doing this on a practice paper. If you're in the classroom, we have some art sketch pad worksheets that you can work on, or maybe you have a sketchbook at home. When you draw a tree, you're going to draw the trunk and then some Y shapes. So I'm going to draw my trunk here. I actually started below the horizon line, which is completely fine. And then for my trunk, I'm going to add just lines that make V's or W shapes for every one of my branches. Although it doesn't look like a lot, when you start step six, painting the tree silhouette, it will turn into a tree. So for my tree silhouette, I did want to make my trunk a little bit wider at the bottom. So I went ahead and added a couple lines thick for that trunk at the bottom. And then I twisted my paintbrush sideways to get a little bit of like thick to thin branchy feeling lines and went up and across on my paper. Understand that every tree looks different and every person's tree looks different. So it is okay if your tree does not look exactly like mine. As long as it has those Y shapes, it will feel like a real tree. I hope you have enjoyed making art with us today. What will you create? 